Welcome back to another Terra Talk. I am so ecstatic to see you. It is 2022 and we have to start off the year right with a new video, right? I received a really good question uh, regarding a topic I've always meant to cover. And the question is, can you make a video on why you chose CS, computer science? I just got accepted to CPP for CS as well, but I'd like to hear your perspective. Thank you so much for your comment. I'm excited to share my perspective as I graduated in 2021 with a computer science degree, magna cum laude. I have to say it out loud because it's, I just can't believe I did that. So, okay, so, <laughs> okay, so to answer this question, why I chose CS, my short answer is because my mom told me to. So now my perspective of computer science, things that I should have known, things that I learned, I'm just going to share it all with you right here, right now, let's go. What is it like in the classroom? Now this just goes for virtual or not virtual, depending on the state of the world at the time you are watching this. In most of my classes, the professor had PowerPoint slides and they would just talk with those slides. Sometimes the slides coincided with the textbook, sometimes they didn't. Quick tip, don't purchase any textbooks, the required textbooks until after syllabus week. I've had professors who never used the required textbook or had us use an online version. It might help you and be help you be more cost effective if you just wait until the first day, your first class meeting, and they will go, your professor will go over whether or not you need the required textbook or textbooks. In terms of the vibe that you'll be getting in class, if you're in person, you'll most likely see people just on their laptop chilling until class starts and then stay on their laptop. A lot of people like to take notes on their laptop. I was one of those students who took it by hand. Um, I just remember hearing that when you take notes by hand, you're really looking for things that are actually important to write down. Whereas if you are typing it, it's easy to just type every single word. So the classrooms in the CS building, this is building eight, unless things change by the time you watch this, but the classrooms are not what you think think of necessarily if you, you're thinking of a college classroom in a movie or something that's not what the classrooms look like they kind of look like high school classrooms to be honest i think my biggest class size was around 75 people and then on average it was around 40 to 50 people i thought this was kind of nice the small class sizes because you'll you you kind of start recognizing people as you take more classes and it's just nice to not have so many people around you i don't know i don't know if that's just because i'm that's just how I am, but I don't know. I thought it was nice to have a nice and small, smaller classes. Another thing about class that you should expect is you'll be assigned projects and be given around two weeks usually to complete those projects. For some classes, professors will have you do handwritten assignments. That just depends on the type of content that you're learning. Handwritten meaning that you'll solve problems like the way math classes usually go. But for your average CS class, you'll be given those bigger projects. You'll have a couple weeks to do with project requirements. Please do not wait until the night before to start any of these coding projects. You cannot predict errors with your coding environment. You cannot predict errors with your own logic. You cannot predict errors or just things that come up in life. So please do not wait until last minute. And do not, even if the professor is super nice, do not think that they're going to give you an extension just because you are struggling and your friend is struggling. No, I mean, you just cannot depend on that extension all the time. Another thing you should know about being a computer science major is whether or not you are new to coding when you start, you will need to self-study. No one is going to hold your hand through coding or learning Java or learning any programming language. That is something you will do based on your own motivation and your interest. Let's say you receive the requirements for your class project. So say you're building an online store application. Your project requirements will probably include something like calculate the subtotal of the items that the user has chosen and placed in their shopping cart and display that subtotal to them. That's the requirement. That's one of the features of the application. But no one is going to tell you on line five, declare a variable named subtotal. <laughs> no one's going to tell you to do that. You will come up with that logic. You will learn how to build out those kinds of applications kind of on your own. And that's not to say that no one will help you ever. If you are actually trying out reasonable approaches to the project and things don't work out, I will go into how you can seek help 
for that. Uh, but my point is, as you go through this major, there's a certain problem solving mindset or process that you'll be developing for yourself as you're learning new concepts and as you're applying those new concepts to your projects. There is no feeling like getting your program to work the way you want it to. Sometimes tears are involved, but please push through, keep pushing, it's so worth it. And trust me, if you're struggling, you are not the only one. This major is hard, but just know that this major, no matter what kind of experience you come in with, requires you to be learning consistently. You will always be learning. I am learning every day and I already have a job. So this is something that you have to kind of come to terms with, that you are going to feel uncomfortable throughout the major and through the job. But just remember the kind of reward that you get when you actually understand it and when you actually implement something that works. Just start getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. That was one of the best pieces of advice I've ever heard, I had ever heard before starting my job. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Technology is rapidly changing, rapidly getting better, and you have to keep up. We have to keep up. I may have to spit, but you didn't see that. We're in this together, and I believe in you. Now, for any project, you'll probably run into some errors. Errors. Which means that you'll need to ask for help. One way to give yourself the best chance for success in a class is to go to office hours. Office hours saves lives. Okay, but what if I'm shy and I don't want to talk to my professor? I hear you, but one soft skill you're really going to need when you start interning or working is communication skills. Remember a lot of the time, professors enjoy helping you. That is if you know how to ask for help. You don't just show them your program and be like, fix it please. Explain to them what you've done so far, the specific problem you're running into, and anything you've tried so far to fix the problem. From a real world point of view, this type of interaction, this asking for help, it doesn't go away. When you're an entry level engineer, you're probably going to have to ask your your colleagues or your project lead for help. I do this all the time with my project lead. We have teams calls about my issues and I just explain to him exactly what's going on and we work through it together. This isn't to say don't ever use online resources like Stack Overflow or don't ever talk to your friends. Those are great resources too. But it's awesome to talk, or maybe even email if they allow it, your professors about your problems. And going to office hours will not only help you with your project, it could really help you start building the relationship with your professor. And who knows later on, you can go and ask them for a letter of rec, a letter of recommendation, because you're gonna be applying to scholarships, yeah? Yeah? Yes, you are. All right, let's say you're in this major, you're enjoying your classes, and you realize, hey, like, I don't have any friends. Well, if you want to make friends, that is a great idea. And student clubs is one of your top places where you can find some like-minded friends in this major. Not to mention, at these clubs, there are often some guest speakers from companies you might want to end up working for. So check it out, check out the guest speakers, and just get talking, just be like, hi, my name is so-and-so and I am interested. <laughs> Thank you all for joining me for this first video of 2022. I hope you enjoyed something. Sorry, was it like a rip headphone users moment? I'm so sorry. Um, I'm just so excited to be back and sharing what I can with you. And I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful new year. A great semester if you're starting a new semester soon or if you're just starting as, as Cal Poly. And let me know if you have any questions or comments below. I believe in you. Let's do this. Bye. <laughs>